from wickedness to hope. Now the people in Noah's time were wicked. God facilitated closing their eyes for good, although I'm not so sure rest is the reward for wickedness. Wickedness. What is wicked? And I'm not talking about the play, but in Genesis 6 we read, the, law, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. Every thought, only evil all the time. That's pretty bad. That's wicked. People like this are the worst. Not just weak, not just bad, maybe not even just evil, but wicked. Let me just throw this out there. Is that what we're seeing today? Well, I think we're seeing weakness. I think we're seeing occasions of bad, and I think we may even see occasions of evil. But can it get any worse? Is some of what we're seeing wicked? Well, if it is, there's still hope. Just ask Noah. Noah had hope. You and I have hope. Noah was saved from the punishment of the wicked by the flood. Those waters drowned the wickedness off the face of the earth. And Noah and his family were saved. But why? Were Noah and his family immune to that sin which is passed down generation to generation from Adam? I think not. Why then? Well, in our text from Genesis, we read, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Notice the passive nature here. The Lord found Noah favorable. Well, what was it in Noah that was so favorable? Well, maybe it wasn't something in Noah, although he behaved better than his perishing peers, but rather the way God saw Noah. God saw Noah through the eyes of his favorable promise, and that favorable promise then manifested itself in the beautiful hope we see in God's post-flood promise. We read again, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Divine cosmic order restored. Well, that's a promising picture, a hopeful picture picture and we too have this promising picture this hope even in the midst of wickedness a wickedness caused by the devil a wickedness caused by a world which is nuanced by narcissism a wickedness caused by our own fallen flesh even in the midst of our current chaos we have hope Is that because we're so wonderful? I think not. Is it because we have found favor in the eyes of the Lord? I think so. But this favor, too, is passive. It is not achieved by us. It is simply received by us in faith and trust. God sees us through the eyes of his own promise. Referencing the old Caesarean selection, Weenie witty weechie, God came, God saw, and God conquered. In our reading from Genesis, we saw that God saw the wickedness of the world, and he came with a mighty flood, and he conquered wickedness and provided hope for those who found favor in his eyes. Well, today God sees wickedness in the world, and God came not with a flood but in his son, Jesus Christ. And in Christ, God conquered sins and provides hope for those who find favor in his eyes. Do you find favor in God's eyes? Well, before you assume the paralyzing posture of oops, rest assured that any favor you and I have in the eyes of the Lord rests upon his promise 
not our practice. In Latin, we call that favor de, the favor of God. And this favor is found solely in Jesus Christ, who sacrificed his body and his blood for the sins of the world. In baptism, God found us with his favor. He credited us with the benefits of Christ's sacrifice. In the Lord's Supper, we receive the benefits of Christ's sacrifice as we receive the body and the blood of our Lord. Looking for favor? Then look no further than Christ. Look no further than your baptism. A flood of sorts happened there, too. The old Adam in us, our old wicked sinful nature was drowned and a new Adam arose finding favor in the eyes of the Lord. We have the same hope as Noah. And things always look better with hope. It's like a whole new world. Still though, the wickedness of sins is all around us and all in us. The hope received in the floodwaters of our baptism needs to be sustained by the promises in God's word and the Lord's Supper. Hang on to these and stay hopeful. Hang on to these and live in the hope of heaven. A recent lack of communication with my wife may illustrate this hope of heaven. Our niece just had her baby. I know that now because Kathy shouted across the house that our niece is on maternity leave. Now, I must be getting old, because what I heard is that our niece was on eternity leave. Eternity leave, I thought. She's so young. But if you think about it, there are some parallels between maternity leave and eternity leave. Uh, maternity leave begins after the arduous event of birth. Eternity leave begins after the arduous event of death, which for a Christian is like a new birth, in maternity leave, you get to embrace the fruit of your labor. There's a whole lot of hope there. In eternity leave, you get to embrace the fruit of Christ's labor. Endless hope there. From wickedness to hope. There's a little wicked in all of us. It kind of comes from our concupiscent condition. But the floodwaters of our baptism drowned that old wicked Adam in us and a new person came forth. You know, perhaps in a sense it's true that there ain't no rest for the wicked till we close our eyes for good. Oh, we've been rescued from the condemnation of our wickedness in the waters of holy baptism. We have that hope now. And when we close our eyes for good in death, then we really will enjoy rest. Sabbath rest eternally characterized by the restful activity of glorifying God in the eternal presence of the author of our Sabbath rest, Jesus Christ. Hang on to that hope. We need it in times like these. We have it in times like these. Amen.